So we decided to move everything to the garage. I moved the cabinet to the garage where I have all my tools and everything I need. Um, yesterday in the mail, I got the uh, ACMI VGA board, controller board, which will give us the uh, visuals we need on the built-in monitor that's in the cabinet to the Raspberry Pi, as well as this Kenter amplifier, something basic and small, simple, just to give us a little boost on the uh, speaker we plan to change out on the cabinet as well. Um, the HDMI VGA board only cost about $29 uh, free shipping if you're an Amazon Prime member. Um, the uh, Kenter amplifier was about $10, also free shipping. And um, I got them real quick. I think I ordered them on Monday and I got them yesterday, which was Tuesday. So um, I want to thank um, uh, ETA Prime. For starting this, he's the one that uh, gave me the idea to get the uh, uh, VGA board, the uh, HDMI board, and swap that out. Also, um, I will be uh, giving credit where credit is due. Um, the amplifier was also by another uh, YouTube uh, subscriber, which I'll put the name down on the video, so you can uh, we can give thanks to him as well. Um, so let's just switch the cabinet and put these parts in. Okay, so we're we're in the uh, back of the cabinet where we are going to remove this uh, control board here that comes with the arcade one up. It's the uh, the control board for the Street Fighter games that are in there. Um, we are going to replace it with the new control board, the new uh, ACMI VGA control board that I got in the mail yesterday. I can grab it here. Um, it comes with a lot of extra stuff that we don't need. Okay, we just need the uh, the board itself, the control board here. Let me uh, untangle this right here. Okay, we just need this control board and this uh, setting board, control setting board here. I want to thank ETA Prime for. Uh, Doing his doing the first video on this, and um, showing us the way of of changing this out so that way we can get the uh, either the Raspberry Pi or the uh, Pandora boxes or any type of of uh, video system in there so that we can play almost anything we can off the stock monitor that's on there. So we only need this part right here, the control board. And the uh, setting board here. Everything else that came with it. Uh, this board we don't need. And the wire that comes with it. We don't need that. Unless we decide to use that for a later project. As well as the, uh, the VGA board here. Or the VGA cable here. We don't need this either. We could put these aside. And save it for another project. If it comes, if comes to. We need to change out that uh, control board here. So we're gonna need a Phillips screwdriver. Like I said, again, another uh, Harbor free, uh, free gift. I have like about three or four of these laying around. So we're gonna remove the uh, control bo box here, a box to the control board. It's only two Phillips screws to remove the panel. Let me get some light in there. I want to bring you guys closer so you can see what I'm doing. Let me zoom you in so you can see. Uh, we're removing the other screw here, right there. We'll get that. Okay, so here we have we have the uh, Street Fighter control board right here inside the metal casing. Okay, we need to remove that from there. Uh, remove the wiring. Uh, we're going to be using the stock wiring from the uh, 
control board, uh, actually from the monitor to this control board, and we're going to connect it to the other uh, uh, HDMI control board that we ordered. Now we ain't going to need um, this HDMI cable, so if we want, we if we have to, I mean, we, we must remove that, so we don't need that anymore. We have this hanging so far. Okay, so we removed the uh, the uh, HDMI cable that was connected to this control board. Uh, we have to remove this board out of the uh, casing so that we can use it. We can just use the wires. So I'm going to take this out. Uh, try to be cautious with the screws. Do not drop or lose them like I've done before. You don't really need them, but it's good to have them on the side just in case it's, we actually you don't need to unscrew anything out really all you need to do is take out this one screw right here which is the ground cable take that one out let the screw fall into the, bo the, the box the casing that is the ground screw you want that and you want to disconnect the uh, power cable and the uh, VGA cable I'm assuming there you go and you got the board out this is your Street Fighter board okay this holds all three games um, if I recall in an, uh, another YouTube video this is probably the same board they're using for the up and coming Mortal Kombat arcade cabinet which I definitely will get but um, you don't need to take it out like I said out of the box you just leave it in there and just put it aside we don't need it anymore we'll put that aside so we have the uh, the cables we, we, we have the cables hanging here that we need the power and the uh, VGA now I like to wrap this one up around the other one so it keeps it a little near nice and clean right there also I, I, I cover it with an insulant with a, a cable tie insulant now remember we need this ground and we need the uh, the VGA and I'm assuming this is the power if I'm, I'm mistaken please you know comment in the bottom let me know but we're learning together so we have the uh, controller board, the new one we just got from Amazon. Um, we're going to connect first the uh, the uh, black cable here. And what you want to do is you got to pay attention on the board. There is an arrow. Like if you zoom, if I zoom you in, on the board there is an arrow right there, not the big one, like a little one right next to it. Okay, and there is a white dot on your uh, black cable, your black VGA cable. I keep calling it that, but I'm not too sure. But this cable right here has a black dot. What you want to do is you want to line that up with your first set of pins. Make sure they're all in there. Line it up. And press firmly. Make sure it's secured in. Boom. And there you go. You have your connection in there. Now you want to take your power one and give it another twist around because like I said, I like to keep this neat and clean. And you're going to connect this one to your side right here. To your... The, your, your uh, your left side of the board right there that's power you're gonna connect it in there and firmly press it in boom just like that and you're connected okay now you have this black solo cable with a ring in the bot at the end of it that is your ground 
This has to be grounded to the board. Without it, you won't get any visual or nothing out of that. So this single cable here has to be grounded to the board. Um, I've seen people ground it on the uh, left side, on the right side. I've seen them. As long as you connect a ground it to any one of the free circles on the board, you're good to go. You're golden. So you have, I personally like to have it over here on the far right. I like to have it right there on the far right, away from everything and nice and simple. Now the good thing is, in the beginning when uh, when this, when we started doing these, they told me that, you know, the, the ETA Prime said you have to provide your own, your own screw. Now when you order, now when you order, they provide you with a screw and nut so you can ground that cable, which is good. Okay, you just got to be cautious. Don't lose it. Let's cut it open here. Get it open. Try. Okay, now we're going to start with the screw from the back side of the uh, board. We got the screw here, back side of the board. Like so. Okay, then you want to take that single grounded cable with the ring on it and put it in that screw area put it through the screw like so and you see the way it fell in place like that I like that it's not touching anything or any anywhere or you can actually turn it upward like that so it doesn't touch or link with any other component on the board okay now you want to take your nut and put it on the screw there and it doesn't have to be super tight it just has to be firmly screw screwed in and you could use this and you you you'll be grounded you uh you could use a screwdriver with one finger on one side holding the the uh the nut and with the fillip on the other side screwing it through so you feel it actually turning on your other side on your finger there it's nice and tight and like I said nothing is touching on the board keep it nice and away from everything else let me loosen it a little so I could shift it a little like that see I like to keep it like that I like to keep it looking a little away from everything else once you see it in that position tighten it up and that's it. You're good to go. You're definitely good to go. You see? Okay. So now you got your board hanging there. And you, you want to mount it. What you want to do is you want to mount it against... Oops, sorry. What you want to do is mount it against the, uh, the wood right here. You don't want to mount it against the metal. You might cause a short. You want to mount it somewhere here in uh, the middle of the wood panel. Right there. And you want to secure it with either uh, heavy duty double sided tape. What I like to use is uh, Velcro. Just in case later on I need to remove it. Which I don't. But I like to have that security of knowing that I can remove it. These are industrial strength uh, low profile Velcro pieces. Um, the good thing about it, it holds about... Uh, it says right here. It used to say it. I guess I'm wrong. Anyway, it has uh, 10 ovals. Okay. Two of each. And what I want to do is take one set. Okay. And you want to cut it together. You want to line them both together. Not stick them. Don't stick them together. That's the hard part. Line them up like this together. Okay. Get a pair of scissors. Okay. Cut two. Cut two each. Cut a set out each. Like so. Okay. And you wanna um. 
you have two sets. You have the uh, soft felt part and the actual loop part, the uh, Velcro part. What you want to do is Velcro them together. Be careful because it, once it comes off, just like it did there, once it comes off, it's going to be hard to use. So you want to Velcro this together like so. Velcro the other side together like so. Now they're ready to be adhesive. Now what I want to do, what we're going to do is we're going to put it on the back of the board. And we can put it anywhere, anywhere you want on the board. I like to keep them on both ends. So we're going to start with peeling the plastic off. And sticking one end over here. Like so. Peeling it. There you go. That's ready to stick. And then the other end over here. Like so. And that's ready to stick. You see? Now you take this and you line it up as best as you can. You know, not too close to the metal. Not too far where you're pulling the string. And you drop it in the center here of the board. Like so. And you press where you think you know the Velcro is. And boom. It's holding in place. There you go. So now you got your uh, board set up and put in place right there. Okay. Now, you may ask yourself, okay, so what about the other side? You don't really need the, the Velcro on the other side. You can get some heavy-duty double-sided tape. I found it easy to use. Now, you don't really need um, Vel uh, Velcro for the... Uh, controller board this is what this does is controls the 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 display settings like you could do uh, brightness uh, darkness I, I don't think you you really need this but um we connect it anyway just in case later on you wanna do some adjusting visually on the the, the monitor but to mount it on you're gonna use some basic 3m tape this is about a half an inch okay you want to take a strip long enough as long as the board like so put it on what I want to do is I want to put it on the uh, spike area actually I'm gonna do top and bottom if I recall that's how I did it before you want to put it on the bottom spiky area where the pin settings are that's one and you want to cut that piece off like so Okay, you got one piece on there, the bottom, and you definitely want to do the top. You want to give it a double, double security on there so you don't have to worry about it coming off or falling down. You know, I'm sure there's a one inch 3M tape you can get out there. This one was available for me because I, I had it around, had it for some time still good and that's it and we cut that piece off okay alrighty okay so now you have the uh, 3M tape on your control your uh, control board for your uh, ACMI board okay now I find it very Very difficult to get that red tape off, red uh, red uh, the red backing off. So what I use is like a little pin or something to just pick it out a little in a corner. There you go. Once it lifts it, you can peel it off. You could also use a razor blade. As long as you got one corner lifted. There you go. That piece is ready to come off. Alright. 
Now the other side. There you go. So there you go. Now you're ready to stick this right next to it on the uh, inside the arcade cabinet. Let me zoom you guys in so you can see. All right, I got a little light in there. All right, so what you want to do is you want to stick this on the inside of the cabinet. You can give the wire a little rotate so it 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 keeps neat and away from everything else. There you go. That's much better. See, I gave it a little rotate, and now the cable is. tucked in there okay what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick this right here not too high not too low just somewhere where you're comfortable with it I think it it takes like a good overnight for it to uh, stay sturdy on there Not sticking. Let's see what's going on. Okay, why is it not sticking? Okay, so I had a little difficulty with the double-sided tape. I guess because it's cold in here in the garage, it didn't want to adhesive very well. So what I did is I added some uh, one-inch double-sided tape on top of that one, making it a little thicker and more stronger. Let's try this again. Let's see where we can stick this anywhere. Yeah, it's definitely adhesing right now. Okay. So there you go. Okay, so now you have it a little better. Everything's stuck to the back of the LCD board. Now you're looking at it, and that's all to it. Now, um, the, uh, the testing of this requires us to get a pie. I'm going to get a pie, uh, plug everything in, give it a shot, see how it is. Again, like I said, um, to power this control board, which is great, all you need is the original power of the uh, RK1 of cabinet, which is the one it came with. All you need is the original power. Okay, and um, it'll power up that board. Uh, you don't need to use the extender that came with it. You just plug it directly through. And I'm going to... Uh, Get a, a Raspberry Pi, test this out, and um, make sure everything's working good. Okay, be right back. Okay, so I went and got my own personal uh, Pi, the one I use at home, I mean inside the house. Okay, and like I said, you only need the, uh, you need the power cable from the uh, Arcade 1UP to power up the uh, control board. So we're going to do this. Plug it into the power supply here on the uh, left side. Okay. Plug it to the uh, power source. Okay. Now, the Pi has its own VG, uh, ACMI. So you need an ACMI cable. You need the power for the uh, Pi. I will uh, get further into... Uh, what the Raspberry Pi does later on in another video. I bought it, I got a controller, Xbox 360 controller connected to it. Uh, what you want to do is plug in the HDMI from the uh, Pi to the board. Uh, you can already see on the uh, the little uh, controller board with the red light right here that is powered on, it's working. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this around as careful as we can so that I can show you the boot up. And 
and we could see if everything worked out okay okay let's look at the monitor let's power on the pie Off the control All right, let's power up the pie and see what we get. There we go. Yes, we got video. Well, we're not going to have any sound because the speaker is disconnected. Actually, the whole control board is disconnected. I haven't um, set that up. I got my uh, personal boot screen there. Looks like the original, right? Everything's working as an emulation station. It's a program that you put on your Raspberry Pi. I am using the uh, Wolfenos Arcade Ready uh, image with a little uh, extra on it. I added some more uh, games. I'll get into that in another further video. But so far, so good. It's no problems. Takes a second to boot up. Give it a second. Okay. Right now I have it set up for uh, Genesis because I'm still working on it. Uh, I have um, other systems on here. And like I said, um, right now on this Pi itself, we have a total of, let me see, all games. Right now there's 7,728 games on this okay uh all the classics like i said i'll get further into this later on as as we progress with the videos but we got videos so that's good that's a plus all right let's shut it down okay once you shut the pie off the uh, video will shut itself off i will have um i will do a video on an external power power uh off um there is a script on the image so that you can use the on and off switch on the uh, control panel but I've come to test that and what happens is when you turn it off it does shut down the uh, the pie but the fan is still spinning so it doesn't completely shut it off so I just found that 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 script and the, the switch here to be useless so we're gonna use these two areas for uh, other for locations for other two buttons um, the hole is already there, so we're just going to work with that hole and put in other buttons in there instead. Okay? Let's disconnect everything. And disconnect the power. going to disconnect the HDMI and that's it you also like I said you don't need the uh, the HDMI uh, the uh, IDE cable for your control board that can be put away because it's no longer connected there we will be I will be showing you in a further video how to get that control board how that how to get that uh, control panel the joystick panel to work on on the pie and all that Okay, so what I wanted to show you is um, this area right here is a little um, area that I like to clean up, make it look a little neat. So what I do is use a 3 8 uh, protective wire wrap. You can get this at Harbor Freight. It's very inexpensive. Um, you get a whole roll. It comes in a bag. And what you want to do is you want to measure it up to uh, the length of what you're going to use. Okay, you measure it up and you cut it with a pair of scissors. Okay. And what I like, what, why I like to use this is, like I said, it it makes it look a little neater and cleaner. And um, the reason I use a three eighths because I run the uh, IDE cable through there. That will be sh I'll be showing in another video. So what you want to do is you want to separate it. Split it in half, 
and try to get that wire in there as best as you can. I know it's a little difficult, but once you got it on there, it looks a little bit nicer. You know, you're not going to move this or take this out again. And you want to tuck all the, you know, the two wires in there, the, uh, the power wire and the, uh, the VGA wire, I keep calling it. And later on, we'll run the uh, LED cable in there for the uh, next project coming up. I need to cut a little bit more. And that's it. You can tuck the rest on the top end. And right there. I think it looks a little neater now. You see? Looks a little neater. Nice and clean. Hides everything away. Everything's functioning. And that's it. Alright. Thank you. Um, hope you like this video so far. Um, please leave a comment, uh, subscribe, uh, share as well, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.